Hi, it's Paul from Model Build International. Uh, don't forget to use the subscribe button down there. Today we're going to have a flick through the pages of a book from Kagero. This is one in their series on ships with Super 3D drawings. This is the SMS Blucher. Luca was the last armoured cruiser built by the German Empire. She was designed to match um, what German intelligence were believed was going to be the invincible class of British armoured cruisers. And she was built to basically be better than they were. Unfortunately it didn't quite work out that way because the invincible class were the first true battle cruisers. And um, the Germans only found out what the invincible class was really going to be after the Blucher was uh, laid down and it was too late to change her. So basically she was she was launched at a time where she uh, was better than everything else before and was immediately um, obsolete because of the uh, introduction of battle cruisers. Um, she was commissioned in 1909. Um, she took part in the operation to bomb uh, yeah, um, or shell Hartlepool and she was hit by six shells from a coastal defence battery and uh, nine people were killed. Um, she was built with uh, 12 8.3 inch guns in six turrets, eight six, six inch guns, um, four torpedo tubes as well, 16 88 millimeter guns. Uh, so, and she uh, was lost at the Battle of Doggerbank. Basically, she took some heavy hits from the British battle cruisers, which slowed her down. And then it came basically to a decision of, um, do they just leave the leave the Blue Cur to uh, to be lost, or do they try and defend her? And obviously, they um, basically the German fleet steamed away, and the Blue Cur was uh, was sunk. Okay, so let's have a look inside the book. Uh, this is Super Drawings in 3D, 16065, so I think this is the 65th book in this series. This is on the German armoured cruiser SMS Blucher. Um, as you probably know from the bit before, she was a bit of a sort of an interim ship. She was uh, the last and best of the armoured cruisers and immediately obsolete because uh, the Invisible class were all straight out of the first battle cruisers and made her obsolete. So the first thing you notice in here um, is the plans. Uh, these I reviewed a uh, one of these books for the Yohagi uh, a while ago, and that had 3D glasses inside it. This one's got plans instead. So there's a full set of plans there. Let's move them around a bit, make sure they all appear. One three fiftieth scale. That's the. What is it? So you can get the hull contours all the way through. You can also see the rigging there as well. And on the other side we have side view and a top view. Again, that'll be particularly useful for getting all the, getting the rigging right. And there's a fair amount of detail on there. And again, this is 1 3 the scale. It also gives you a good idea of how the wide the how big the model would be if you built it 1 3 the scale. So that's all pretty neat and pretty good stuff. And then, we'll go through, there's a bit of history on the ship. Um, basically the stuff I love, what I went through previously in the, the history of the ship. Um, hull, armour, armament, machinery, operational career, 1909 to January 1915. Obviously she was sunk. Um, and then, we get into the drawings. Uh, bow view, stern view, notice the name of the view is at the top right there. And each view is described, oh there's Scharnholz, Blucher, SS, MS von der Tann. Um, and it gives you close-up views, sort of start from there, run down the starboard side, giving you views of everything to the end of the starboard side, then sort of running along the top along the deck. And it goes into, you can see everything you need to see, there's canvas, the colours of things, where all the wires are, 
with um, well, literally everything also tells you what things are for and like this is the conning tower divided into two parts and who was in what part of the conning tower so there's tons of detail here if you're building a 1 3 50th scale model of the ship or 1 700th it'll show you exactly where everything everything goes what everything looks like where the cables should be where ropes should be where all the items should be searchlight towers sort of taken off the ship so you can get a clearer view there's all sorts of stuff in here showing you what is where centerline view from the stern looking right at the stern looking forward vents then going inside the ship um, two views of the starboard 88mm guns on bombarding Hartlepool on December 16th 1914 she received six hits from coastal artillery one six inch shell came through the ship side and between these guns and exploded killing nine people again rigging three cabins more on the what's on the, on the tripod masts Lots of really good details in here. Going down to the framing. Uh, wood machinery, the wood itself. Lots of lots of details. Here's a little thing. There's a, there's a, there's a picture of it here. The four turrets in the centre. They had um, basically a. Sh the magazine for them all fed uh, shells and propellant onto these uh, conveyor belts which was an easy way to get them to, uh, to the turrets. Turned out it wasn't such a good idea because um, they took a shell hit into this part. Here we go, it says here. Um, bah, bah, bah. Basically because the absence of magazines under the fort which was thought necessary to give room for the boilers during the Dogger Bank battle in January 15, splinters caused munitions firing this gangway and within seconds had consumed uh, B and F turrets and their handling rooms. So it was a bit of a, a weak point. Um, back into the inside one of the main turrets. Sort of thing. A 8.8mm um, 8 8 8 sub calibre barrel. What they do for testing, or basically um, practice firings, you put that inside the main barrel and fire an 88mm shell instead and that you don't save uh, barrel wear on the 21cm guns. Ammunition handling, torpedo tubes, have their works inside of there. Now you get on uh, steam engines and boilers, the uh, machinery plant, This is an engine telegraph. Um, the night speed indicator, so basically lights on here would light up to, to uh, order speed changes to the fleet. And somebody will have to read those on the ship behind and know that the ship in front has changed speed. Ship's boats, and there we are at the end. So that's about 84, 85 pages. Um, basically, if you're going to if you're going to build a model of the Blucher, this is pretty much everything you need to know. It's an invaluable, easy to use guide to the ship. Um, many thanks to Kagero for sending it along for us to have a look at.